This is Gene Bailey. If you're unfamiliar, he is a hardcore Trump extremist. Would do anything for the dude. And he runs his TV show called Flashpoint. It's on Kenneth Copeland's TV network, Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Anyways, uh, it's on his network. So let's give this a listen. See what he has to say. Um, this is Gene Bailey. He's the host. And while we do, we're going to play some Breath of the Wild, too. Just kind of riding around getting some light roots and hitting shrines and stuff. So if you've never played it, uh, it shouldn't bother you too much. It'll be in the background. But yeah, let's give this a listen. Bill Meyer talks about Ruth Bader Biden. Watch. I I'm sorry, Bill Meyer? Ruth Bader Biden? I don't understand. New rule, someone has to convince President Biden that if he runs again, he's going to turn the country back over to Trump and go... <laughs> no. I, I seriously deeply doubt it to the bottom of my heart. And go down in history as Ruth Bader Biden. I see, because Ruth Bader Ginsburg should have left the Supreme Court long before she did. Like, I, I'm talking, she should have left the Supreme Court like 10 years earlier when Obama had a majority in the House and the Senate. And instead of leaving the Supreme Court, she stayed on until she couldn't leave anymore. And Donald Trump got to pick that seat. Ruth Bader Ginsburg was an incredible person, but she's kind of to blame for what happened to Roe v. Wade. If she had survived just two or three more months, or if she had retired like eight years earlier, we wouldn't have lost Roe v. Wade. Anyways, that's what he's referring to if you were unfamiliar. <laughs> the person who doesn't know when to quit and so does great damage to their party and their country. All of us who like Joe Biden have been struggling lately with the political situation in the Democratic Party. And it Bill Maher is turning right wing, by the way. I don't know if anyone has noticed that. He's basically on the right now. Incumbent we admire who acquitted himself well in a first term, but who even members of his own party don't want to see run for a second. You know that future headlines bit we do? Well, the most predictable headline ever is presidential race tied two weeks before every election it's always tied no matter who is running the vast majority just vote for the d or the r but by that's true uh the difference maker is who is motivated to come out which side is more motivated to come out that motivation can stem from being deeply disturbed by who the other side is and what they believe and what they do and all that stuff. It can be motivated by that. Or it can be motivated by loving your side, uh, like a lot. I think people are so repulsed by Donald Trump that they will come out no matter what, in my humble opinion. Well, you guys, YouTube's algorithm operates off of a few factors. Watch time, whether or not you subscribe, and whether or not you like something. So if you really want to help my channel, I would appreciate it if you guys watch the video to the end. If you don't watch it to the end, just watch a little bit longer than you would have otherwise. I would appreciate that very much. All right, let's get back to the video. They could fill him up with that tire stuff that, you know, you got a flat tire and you put the foam in your tire to, to like, refill it until you can get a new tire put on. They could fill his body up with that and wheel him out in a wheelchair and he would probably still win because Trump is so hated by basically everybody because he's such a controversial figure. I think that's probably the case. Biden is the one Democrat who gives pause to so many people, even in his own party. Not really. Joe, you did noble service for your country, and you checked that big box, the President of the United States. Of course, as a politician, you're naturally going to say, but the work is not finished. Of course not. It never is. But it's time to let someone else finish it. Now, I think Biden's actually extremely popular among a lot of people, surprisingly. He governed surprisingly to the left, like way more left than I expected him to be, which is great. You know, that's fantastic. I'm really glad to see that Biden was further to the left than expected. He's not really as hated as Bill Maher thinks he is. It's just because Bill Maher's going right. You don't want to go down as Ruth 
Bader Biden. <laughs> America is calling, Joe, and it's saying, that's not our car, Grandpa, we're over here. All right, let, let me, uh, before, I, I mean, that's funny, and he's ma making fun of Joe Biden there. What oh, that's funny, because he's making fun of Joe Biden. Fantastic. Jesus Christ, man. Again, uh, Biden, I don't believe Biden has any <clears throat> abnormal mental deterioration. I think he's in good health, largely. Which I must say, the reason when you say, well, Gene, why did you do that was so disrespectful? No. Uh, let me make sure you understand. It is not his age that is the problem. It's not age. It yeah, they have to say that because Trump is the same age as Biden. It's the mental capacity of what Joe Biden's dealing with is what we're talking about. This is running the free world, the, the most important world leader or was. Uh, you know, Eric, when we see this, uh, what, what was meant in jest uh, really is uh, the rest of the world is mocking us because of Joe Biden. The rest of the world is mocking us because of Trump. Joe Biden is a stand in. He was surprisingly the only person that I think could have won against Trump looking back because Kamala Harris wasn't popular enough. Bernie Sanders was too far left to win. In my opinion, I'm a Sanders supporter to the, to the core. I love Bernie and I wish the country was more with us than they are. But I think that the country's a little bit more moderate than Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden is more moderate than Sanders. So I think that Biden was probably the only one that could have pulled votes from the center. But again, um, Trump is very, very hated by a great deal of people. He is extremely disliked. And I don't think that he's going to win the election uh, again. I think he's going to lose again. Donald Trump will, in my opinion. We'll see. Well, I mean, look, it's got nothing to do with his age. It's got nothing to do with his mental capacity. Oh, really? It doesn't? It has everything to do with his moral character. The man has no soul. He does not believe in anything. Except He's Catholic. He believes in all kinds of stuff. Do you know Joe Biden lost his first wife and two kids, I think, in a car accident? Just weeks after being elected, the junior senator from Delaware, Joe Biden's first wife, Nelia, and 13-month-old daughter, Naomi, were killed in a car accident while out shopping for a Christmas tree. On December 18th. That is some wild shit, right? Lost his wife and newborn child in a car accident. Imagine that shit for a second. Joe Biden is Catholic, and I think he's going to be Catholic for the rest of his life because he wants to believe that he'll see those people again. Uh, that's just my personal opinion on it. Now, I don't know what Eric Metaxas thinks he's talking about. Joe Biden has no moral character, doesn't believe in anything, whatever. I have no idea what that's all about. Joe Biden is a Catholic and has been, you know, for years. Oh, yeah. And he also lost his son, Bo Biden, in 2015 or 2014, maybe, to cancer. He had Hunter and Bo. Bo was in the military for a long time and got cancer and joe biden believes that it was from toxic burn pits and that's why he was fighting so hard to compensate people for you know their work in the military and if they get cancer from toxic burn pits they should be taken care of so on and so forth that's why that was important to joe biden anyway um the dude's a catholic he he does have moral character and religious beliefs oh character the man has no soul. He does not believe in anything except power. He will do anything and go along with any leftward uh, American destroying policy. I'm sorry, he has no soul or political beliefs? What? If that suits him. Uh, he's the definition of political hack, exactly what the founders instituted was this idea that we're going to have a country governed by the people. We're not going to have people uh, who are just amassing power and they're a political class and we're under them. That's the antithesis of the founder's vision. Joe Biden is the perfect example of the antithesis of the founder's vision, that, that he is just a, a political hack. It's like when people talk about Mitch McConnell's age, uh, Mitch McConnell froze up. He, he, 
I, I prefer him not to be able to speak or to do anything because what he is doing is harming the country. Uh, so Interesting. I, Eric Metaxas doesn't like uh, Mitch McConnell. I guess that's because McConnell has kind of butted heads with Donald Trump before, right? Anyway, let's keep listening. Whoop. This is a test of the National Wireless Emergency Alert System. The purpose is to maintain and improve alert warning capabilities. Wow, that's annoying. Really? A test? National Wireless Emergency Alert System. Oh, God. I live in Manhattan. You know what would really suck? It would really suck if uh, North Korea chose to launch a nuke or something right now. That would be terrible. And instead of sending the alert that a nuke was on its way, they sent an alert that they were just testing the system. Something? I mean, this is where they'd hit, right? New York City? God, what a nightmare that'd be. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> It wouldn't make it. You're probably right. You're probably right. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that would, you know, that that does live in my mind, though, all the time. Like, one of these days, North Korea is going to be all pissed off. Or Russia. Or any number of other people are going to be so pissed off at America, they're going to launch a nuke at us, and it's going to come right to New York City. This is where they'll put it. Right here. That, that does freak me out from time to time, but, you know, no point in worrying too much, right? What can you do? It said it was a test of the national emergency system, so I, I'm hoping that it was actually a test, and I'm not going to die in, like, 10 minutes. <laughs> All right, let's keep listening to these people. We have leaders like, like Biden that, first of all, Biden will not, they will railroad him out. He will not get to run for a second term. They're not that dumb. They'll do anything. They'll Who is they? Who's he talking about when he says they? You know who he's really talking about? He's talking about the deep state, the big evil cabal that's out there to get you or whatever. Absolutely insane. And uh, also, it's extremely insane to me to think that Biden won't get a second term. Really? Are you kidding me? They're not holding primary elections. Or maybe they're holding primary elections or not holding debates or anything. He's not going to be replaced by Michelle Obama or whoever the hell they think the, you know, the next nominee is going to be that the deep state puts in. Absurd. They scheduled it on purpose for 2.20 p.m. My kid's school shared the info. Really? Oh, okay. I thought that was a really weird time for them to schedule it. They were two minutes early. Also, hi, if I've never talked here, I don't usually watch via Twitch. Well, welcome. So it's not a nuclear weapon being launched at uh, my current location is what you're telling me? Have it on my calendar. Oh, okay, good. Okay, so it's it's a scheduled thing. All right, so I don't have to worry about the nuke then, as far as I can tell. Unless you guys are just trying to comfort me, realizing that there's a nuke on its way and there's nothing that uh, anybody can do to stop it, so you're just trying to make me feel better. But I'm going to assume that that's not what's happening. I'm going to assume you're telling me the truth. <laughs> All right. The test is to make sure other communication channels can work in the event of what you're worried about. Okay, it was planned. All right. Okay, we're good then. We're good. Don't freak out, anybody. <laughs> Never know, you know? I mean, Russia, all this talk of nuclear war and everything, I don't have a bunker that I can go into. Okay, let's keep listening. They'll pull a fire alarm. They'll do whatever they need to do to make sure that he's not their nominee. They'll make an excuse. They'll lie. Who is they? Again, does he think that... Jamal Bowman pulled the fire alarm to prevent Biden from being the nominee? What? I am so confused by his position on this. I mean, he's going to be proven wrong soon, right? Do ...to make sure that he's not their nominee. They'll make an excuse. They'll lie. But we are in such a grievous place in America that the church needs to pray and to get activated and to get voting, do everything we can to save this nation. And shame on Bill Maher for being so dumb that he thinks that Biden acquitted himself well in his first term. Uh, I don't. Did Bill Maher say that? I don't remember that. Acquitted himself well. What does what does it mean to acquit yourself well? What does it mean to acquit yourself well? D did he, he's, didn't he get a degree in English? To act or behave in a specified way. Wow, okay. <laughs> I guess I'm the idiot here, as it turns out. My mistake. That is an actual saying that I've never heard. 
Huh. Knowing is half the battle, as my friend G.I. Joe says. Okay, go on. What, what, what a joke. I mean, that is, it's unbelievable that, that somebody like Bill Maher could believe such a thing. All right, so since you mentioned Mitch... I mean, they were being positive about Bill Maher in this segment. They were saying Bill Maher being a bastion of the left, apparently, also doesn't like Joe Biden. No, Bill Maher is not on the left. He used to be on the left, but he was always kind of right-leaning on the left, or more center, center left, maybe even a little bit on the right. So, yeah, I don't know what they're talking about right now. McConnell, I had that for later, but I want to make now's a good time to pull this up, gentlemen. Let me show you this uh, breaking report. FTX founder Sam Bankman Fried donated millions of dollars to McConnell's list of anti Trump Republicans after meeting with the Senate minority leader. He donated millions to McConnell's list of anti Trump Republicans. This is another pro Trump conspiracy. I thought Sam Bankman Fried donated to uh, Democrats. Actually, I think he did. I think he donated to both Democrats and Republicans. They're just looking for a reason to hate people and looking for a conspiracy, honestly, is what's happening right now. Also, a blood moon is happening at, at the moment. There we are. Anyways, they, they are desperate to find a conspiracy where Trump is being mistreated or some other nonsense. There was some conspiracy around the use of the alert crazy oh oh uh, yeah i know i heard about that i remember that conspiracy theory it's fascinating it's just your turn uh <laughs> so i i'm assuming you were talking about it's my turn like with the emergency alert system and there is not a nuclear weapon on its way to take me out that's comforting these people are desperate to find a conspiracy where there is none oh uh, interesting donald trump jr says rhinos in the senate are trying to jam billions more in Ukraine funding down our throats. Our voters deserve to know who's selling them out. First up, Mitch McConnell. He says funding Ukraine is the GOP's number one priority. Oh, yeah. Of course, Donald Trump Jr. would be on Russia's side here. That doesn't surprise me at all. Call his office and let him know if you agree. And there's his number. We're going to put that on the screen. Thank you. Uh, Rick, let me go to you out of that. Uh, is it really, is Mitch McConnell on the take? Well, you know, I always look at these guys that go to Washington worth maybe a little bit, and then a few years later, they're worth millions. This Wait, is, is who on the take? Is it really, is Mitch McConnell on the take? Oh my God, they hate Mitch McConnell. Look for any excuse to talk about the dude in a derogatory way. That's fascinating. Just wondering, if you die, who gets the channel from Super Nerd? If I die... My wife and kid split the revenue equally. It will go into a trust for my kid or my wife will be using it to help support my kid. And Alpha Force Zero will be the new host if I die. Um, if Alpha Force Zero and I both die, my wife takes the channel and decides what to do with it. She doesn't want to be a public figure, so more than likely she would give it to somebody like uh, some other YouTuber and ask them to profit share you know she would do like uh she would have i don't know just throwing out like matt dillahunty or, or mr atheist or seth andrews or something she'd have them do my style of content and then she would and then split revenue 60 40 or 50 50 or something with them um if all three of us died my X and my current producer crate is her online username she would take over the channel she lives in west virginia so she'd be safe probably from any you know uh, nuclear fallout or anything most likely unless they decided to go for a nuclear attack on West Virginia as well, which I don't know why they do that. So that's what happens in the event that I die. And if she dies, also, if all of us die, all four of us for some reason, which I don't see as likely, but I suppose I could see it happening if, like, a Trump extremist came after us, which has happened. Um, if all, all of us die, all four of us, I guess, that has not been figured out. I guess the channel would just go away 
uh, because nobody else would have access to anything. No one else has my passwords. I mean, no one has my passwords, actually. But they have physical access to my system. So, anyways, that's the uh, line of succession for me. <laughs> Bankman Freed donated to both parties in hopes of influencing legislation. I figured. I figured that's what it was. It's impressive and sad at the same time how well you're prepared. Yeah, well, I prepared for that eventuality during COVID. Because I, I caught COVID. And I didn't think I was going to die. I believed I was going to be just fine. But just in case... I figured I'd, you know, plan for all of it, everything, just in case something happens. I wanted to make sure that everybody in my life would be okay and taken care of and, and everything else. Uh, I even have it all written down somewhere, what my plan is uh, or what my hopes and expectations are. Um, if, my, if my wife decides to stay with my kid, and not send my kid back to West Virginia with her mom, which is likely what would happen. She'd keep her here. Then they split it um, in one way. And if they, if that's not how it happens, if she sends the kid, or if she sends Alpha Force Zero to West Virginia and she goes to Nebraska or something and everybody splits up, then they split it a different way. Okay, let's keep listening. Uh, Rick, let me go to you out of that. Uh is it really, is Mitch McConnell on the take? Is he on the take? Like, is he taking money from big lobbyists and stuff that are anti-Trump? Well, you know, I always look at these guys that go to Washington worth maybe a little bit, and then a few years later, they're worth millions. This is a guy that's now worth tens of millions yeah. of dollars. Uh, and I have to ask how, how did that happen? Um, so, yeah. Really? You have to ask how that happened? I mean, politicians are always making money in some scheme to get rich. But actually, uh, the campaign finance laws involved here prevent Mitch McConnell or anybody from personally taking money, I believe. You're not allowed to personally take money. Um, if money is donated to, you, to your campaign... It must go to the campaign, and it's all accounted for. And if you lose, you can collect money for your general election and for your primary election simultaneously. But if you lose your primary election, then you must rem you must refund the general election funds. This is very heavily regulated, to the dismay of many people, not just Republicans, Democrats too, I suppose, mostly Republicans. There are a lot of rules around this, and fascinatingly, Madison Cawthorn is where I learned a lot of these rules. Madison Cawthorn was one of the Freedom Caucus in the House, if you guys remember. He made a bunch of claims about doing drugs on Capitol Hill or something and having orgies. Actually, I think Madison Cawthorn's claim was that he was, invi he was invited to an orgy where coke was being done or something to that effect. And he, after making that claim got hit by a bunch of Republican PACs, uh, got hit from the right, lost his primary election, and he was in a safe seat, they believed, as long as he didn't piss off his Republican donors and everything, which he did. By the way, that person that invited him to those cocaine-fueled orgies, allegedly, Roger Stone, not technically a politician, involved in politics, though, and probably had politicians at these alleged orgies. So anyways, the point is I learned about all these campaign finance laws from Madison Cawthorn, who took donations for general and primary simultaneously and used a million dollars from his general fund to fund his primary campaign and now owes that million dollars and he doesn't have it. So campaign finance is pretty stringent. You have to be filthy rich usually to get to that point, to get to the level of a federal level politician. Millions yeah. of dollars. Uh, and I have to ask, how how did that happen? Um, so, yeah, even if he didn't personally get the money uh, from FTX and, and, and these uh, these hacks, uh, no question that he funneled it to the candidates that he wanted to, to support. That's interesting. See, Rick Green seems to know 
that he can't just take the money like that. That's illegal, very illegal, and tracked. So apparently he's pointing out that if he didn't need the money, he would take all of the money and put it into other people's campaigns. That's really interesting. So he accused him of taking the money, and then he said if he didn't take the money, he gave it to somebody else. Roger Stone, wasn't he found guilty of sedition and pardoned? I'm not sure what he, what he was found guilty of, but yes. He was found guilty of something really, really serious, and then he was pardoned. Absolutely. Uh, no question that he funneled it to the candidates that he wanted to, to support. And, and Eric, again, is, is right. Listen, Republicans need to clean their own house. This is ridiculous to have these folks that are not mentally able to do the job. Uh, there's no question that Joe Biden it did not have noble service, as Bill Maher said. Um, and uh, neither, I mean, Mitch McConnell did some good. Let's thank him for holding off the filling of Scalia's seat. That's the one thing I, I look back and thank him for. For uh, throwing a wrench in government to prevent it from operating the way it was supposed to for stealing a Supreme Court seat? Is that what you're thanking him for? But he's a disaster right now. And there's no reason for this. And we and we don't have to be mean about it or cruel about it. There's nothing mean or cruel about saying, for instance, with Joe Biden, the reason for the 25th Amendment being put into the Constitution was for exactly this moment. Okay, I, I don't know what he's talking about. Is he saying, like, if they lose their mental capacity or something is that why the 25th amendment was put into the constitution i'm not even sure that's real i mean rick green it's so hard to know if this dude is like telling the truth or completely full of it don't believe anything he says ever without verifying beforehand though this is an important point why are we not using the Constitution, living out the laws, upholding these things? Right. And it's all about power. It's all about these people holding That's on. Correct. The Biden family have been grifters for 50 years. Oh, give me a break. No, they haven't. They have been li like Biden is one of the most honest people alive. And he has put great effort into making sure everything in, the, in these elections takes place in a completely above board way because... He knew that these people, Rick Green and all these others, Donald Trump, were going to do everything they could to demonize him and claim that he altered the election results or whatever other nonsense. He needed to be completely above board. If he wasn't, they'd use it against him. He's a completely above board person, Biden is. To a fault. It's like boring at this point living off of our tax dollars, and you can bet he's going to ride this thing out as long as he possibly can. Uh, hopefully his own party, as Eric said, will make sure that he's not the candidate. I'm going to triple down again and say there's no way he's going to be the one on the ballot next November. Just ridiculous. Well, if Joe Biden is alive when the election takes place, which I have no reason to think he won't be, he's going to be the candidate. I'm, I am 99% sure of it. We, time will tell, that's for sure. We're seeing this great thing. All right, so let me sh explain why I'm putting Mitch McConnell's number up. He's putting up Mitch McConnell's phone number? I hope that's his office and not his personal phone number. But you can never be sure with these guys, sadly. If you want to call Mitch McConnell's office and tell him if you agree, you can tell him that. Because okay, there you go. So I guess it is his office. That's okay. I'm okay with calling offices. That's just lobbying as citizens of the government. That's fine with me. As he says funding Ukraine is the GOP's number one priority. How about closing the border? The border is closed. Get help. We, you need to call. Whether you agree or disagree, you need to call. So I'm calling you out, Flashpoint Army. P write that number down, 202-224-2541. Call his office, let him know what you think. Uh, I know you guys do this, so there you are. Call Congress finally proposed the 25th Amendment to the states in the aftermath of John F. Kennedy's assassination with the vice presidency vacant and a president who'd previously had a heart attack. Oh, so they proposed it after John F. Kennedy's assassination. Passed, okay, I, okay, here you go. It was passed after the assassination of Kennedy, I guess. That's what it was, Kennedy. Uh, Congress approved the 25th Amendment... On July 6, 1965, states completed ratification in 1967. First use occurred in 1973 when Nixon nominated uh, Gerald Ford. There you go. Interesting. 
knowing is half the battle. Call the number, let him know. Pastor Hank, when we see things like this, uh, uh, I, I'm going to ask you a real softball question, but how should we as the church respond? You know, it sounds like I'm attacking Mitch McConnell. I just don't think he should be doing what he's doing. You, you as the church shouldn't respond at all because the church and the state should remain separate, according to the first sentence in the First Amendment of the Constitution. But okay. Well, we have to go back to, first of all, what God says in his word. And he talks about in the book of, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, uh, the book of Psalm 37, that God is the one that deals with evildoers or those that have done evil. So we've got to go to the word and, and, and hold God to what his word says. But all You've got to hold God accountable, hold God to what his word says. Interesting. To make sure that he protects Trump, right? If God doesn't protect Trump, then there should be consequences against God. <laughs> also, we need to decree his word concerning some of the things that we're seeing with these, you know, liberals and these rhinos. The next thing we need to do is take what God has been saying with the rhema word, with his prophets. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 20, 20, believe the prophets and you will be established. You believe God and you will, you will prosper as well. So I think that we need to start taking what God says in his word, what God is saying prophetically, and we need to do something with it. And that is we need to put it before the face of God. You know, Pastor Gene, we often quote 2 Chronicles 7, 14. We do, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. And we don't realize that it starts off with if my people and we wait i gotta look this one up second chronicles 7 14 what is this what does this say if if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and i will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land oh okay so apparently god won't help you unless everybody in the entire country is crying and praying to him and all that all right interesting go on we th sometimes think that prophecies are just automatic or that it's just going to happen and i don't have to do anything no they're yeah that's how prophecies are supposed to work right they're automatic if god prophesied it then it's gonna happen this dude's such a joke th sometimes think that prophecies are just automatic or that it's just going to happen and i don't have to do anything no there's the if factor we have to do something but here's the good news jeremy well, it seems like you just have to, like, believe in God, and it's going to happen. That that seems like the claim to me, right? This dude lives in another dimension, dude, really. To hear such brazen, complete contradiction just kind of blows me away. Jeremiah 29, 11 says that God has a plan for us. He has a plan for this nation, has a plan for you that are watching. And it's a plan to give you hope. It's a plan to give you a future, to give your children a future, to give this nation a future. And watch this, to give you an expected end. An expected end isn't a surprise. It's already revealed to you. You expect it. God is going to reveal it. He has been revealing it. So I just think we need to put our foot on the gas and we need to hold these people accountable. And uh, it's the only way that we're going to begin to let them know that there's more that are saying enough is enough and that they've been getting by with what they've been doing for too long. Yeah, again, this guy is like a Trump sycophant. He would do anything for Donald Trump and he knows how to filibuster, dude. This guy just talks about the most mundane, random shit constantly. That are saying enough is enough and that they've been getting by with what they've been doing for too long. I, I guess that's just the, the, the rhinos, right? I, I agree. So, so we, we must stand up. This is all about standing yes. up. Uh, everything yep. today. All right. Uh, let's talk about since the last time we were on the air, uh, Diane Feinstein passed. Uh, look at this. Gavin Newsom will appoint Emily's list president. LaFonza Butler to fill the, the seat of the late Dianne Feinstein, elevating the head of fundraising juggernaut that per works to elect Democratic women who support abortion rights. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's California, so of course they're going to pick it like a Democrat to replace her, right? Obviously. That, there she is. LaFonza Butler says, I'm honored to accept Gavin Newsom's, I'm sorry, Gavin Newsom's Gavin Mussolini. Wow, suddenly they don't like Mussolini, huh? Suddenly they think fascism is bad. Up until now, they've been doing the fascism. Insane. By the way, uh, this was a very controversial pick on Gavin Newsom's part to pick LaFonza Butler, apparently. 
I don't like fully know what like what the problem is. I don't know anything about her, but I do know she's not one of the nominee or w- not one of the candidates in the upcoming election, which is good. And she said she's not going to run in the future election, which is also good. I think Gavin Newsom's goal here or the end result anyway, goal or not, was to keep everything fair for the upcoming election, to make sure everybody who was already running had a fair shot. Nomination to be U.S. Senator for a state. I have made my home and honored by his trust in me to serve the people of California and this great nation. Let's keep going. Uh, I'm thrilled. New name, same mission. There it is. Reproductive freedom for all. But now let me show you, guys. Jason, we're going to keep going here. Uh, look at her tweet here, or look at her, uh, her her social media post here. Where does she say she lives? Right there in the button, the next the next uh, slide there. It says that she lives in Maryland. You see that? Maryland. I think that's where she is right now, right? I, I'm not really sure. I don't know. I, I'm not, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if that's where she is now or where she lives or what but yeah uh she's a federal representative of course she lives in the dc area most people have a home in the dc area and in their home district some people just have a house in their home district and they rent or they live with their parents for the time they're in their home district or whatever or they just move to dc straight up move there to the dc area no to my knowledge most people live in virginia maryland delaware surrounding areas if they are polit- uh, federal level politicians, most of the time they live in the uh, in like surrounding areas in D.C. That doesn't surprise me at all to find that she lives near D.C. She's a federal representative now. Wait a minute, isn't she taking over for uh, California? Well, if you look, then she she scrubbed it. Run, run, win, change the world. Uh, she took care of that. I'm telling you. Oh, oh, did they? She just remove her location. She just turned her location off. OK, I think it I think that's just the the location that she's at right now, isn't it? Is that her location data? I it's totally fair to disable that. Um, I just changed mine to a permanent Manhattan. I didn't like put where my specific location is at any given moment. It's interesting that suddenly these people give a shit about all of that, considering the fact that, uh, who is it, Tommy Tuberville, is that his name? Yeah, Tommy Tuberville. Doesn't even live in the state. He's not even there. Like, he's in the neighboring state, isn't he, or something? Brought up by one of the commenters. I appreciate you pointing that out. Uh, I'm not sure which commenter that was, but yeah. Doesn't even live in the state. Nowhere near it. It's like, oh, yeah, he lives in Florida. That's what it is. Uh, I think uh, Tuberville lives in Florida, even though he's a representative for Arkansas. They don't care about that, though. They, they simply do not care. What they care about is destroying their political opponents. That's it. That's like their primary goal. Run, run, win, change the world. Uh, she took care of that. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, we got we must Pay attention. Uh, we must be alert. We must be aware. Um, there are people out, Rick, and we'll we'll wrap up here and uh, go around the horn one last time. There are people here in America that really are not for America's good. I know that. Really wild for him to say that. Finally, something we can agree on, huh? It sounds like a duh comment, but w- there yeah. really are people that don't want to uh, see things there for their own pockets or their pockets of their friends or, or their, they've got their own Epstein's list, whatever. Own Epstein's list. What? Rick, uh, this seems to be we continue to see more and more corruption revealed. Well, we said earlier more corruption revealed. The fact that a federal representative was in Maryland, right outside D.C. That's corruption. Okay. Clear. It's you know it's all about power. This appointment may be the most uh, racist, uh, misogynist, homophobic appointment in political history. Uh, it had. No- oh, suddenly they care about that stuff. Suddenly he's offended at the idea that somebody could be racist, misogynistic, or homophobic, huh? That's a new one. Nothing to do with her qualifications. I mean, she is definitely very pro-abortion, very liberal, but it was all about the color of her skin, her sex organs, and her sexual choices. 
that's what caused Gavin Newsom to appoint her. That's not really. I mean, there were a number of people on the list, some of whom didn't have those qualities, some of whom did. And there were some who had those qualities that were competing against her. And she won out at the end of the day. I get these people are just offended that somebody who is not white, straight, you know, cis and male is getting the appointment that that really gets to him. Tuberville lives in Gates's district. He no longer has a residence in the state he represents illegally holding office, of course. But is he is anything going to be done about it? No, no. Thank you uh, for that information. Neverman is here. Appreciate it. Pensacola. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, interestingly enough, um, Kent Hovind also lives in Pensacola, Florida. Or, yeah, I think he currently lives in Pensacola. And I have a uh, an old Jehovah's Witness friend who I haven't talked to since leaving, really, who lives in Pensacola also now. Should hack off every... Sorry, let's step back. ...choices. That's what caused Gavin Newsom to appoint her. That should hack off every woman of color out there. Uh, if I were appointed for being a white straight male i would be offended that i was appointed for that instead of my qualifications well she wasn't appointed because of those things those are just qualities about her this is really sad dude seriously what is it 90 something percent of the time let's see how many i'm just looking for what the uh demographics are here changing face of america and hr okay here we go here we go Oh, wow. Apparently, the House of Representatives is 29% women. Can you imagine? 29% women. That's incredible, huh? So many women. That's brand new, by the way. For the beginning of the country, it was 100% white, straight, land-owning men, because that was the law. So I don't want to hear any of his bullshit complaining. Uh, so every black female in the country should be offended by this appointment. Um, it, this is this is shameful. This is racist. It's the opposite of MLK saying That's we right. ought to be judged based on the content of our character, not the color of our skin. He didn't go on to say and not our. See, this is really interesting. This is what the KKK has always done. This is the position they always took. They they take it a step further. They make it more extreme so as to make people in the middle feel like they're being discriminated against, to bring people in the middle over to their side. That's the goal. He's using the same exact techniques the KKK's used for 150 years. Saying we ought to be judged based on the content of our character, not the color of our skin. He didn't go on to say, and not our sexual proclivities and all the other things. Uh, but what an embarrassment. What what more should we expect from Gavin Newsom uh, and the left? This is exactly what Joe Biden did when he chose Kamala Harris. It didn't have anything to do with her qualifications, which is obvious. That's not obvious. She was, she's was she been in government for a long time. She was a federal prosecutor, wasn't she, or something for a while? She's extremely qualified. Kamala Harris is. Notice he keeps pronouncing her name wrong, too. It had everything to do with her color of skin uh, and her sex organs. So it's an embarrassment, but it's it's the end result of, of leftism and Marxism. And uh, that's why we have to defeat them. And that's why people watch Flashpoint is to learn how to defeat them, not right. just to complain. We're going to take the actions necessary to bring back. These people are psychotic, dude. Biblical That's civics right. in this country. Amen. So if you're not, if you're not watching, if you're not a part, if you haven't gone through the biblical civics course, we'll put that. Uh, that That's going to be a no for me, dog. If you're unfamiliar, biblical civics, it's this far right extremist thing that you can sign up for, and it, it's like courses to learn to be a Christian nationalist, basically. Website up there with Rick. Uh, we've been watching him. He's doing a live on Monday night. Uh, we yeah, now I, I guess it's shout outs for everybody else. Anyway, these people are psychotic, dude. Seriously, this is insane. And ultimately, this is Trump's position on stuff because these people are Trumpist extremists. So if you ever wondered what Trump's positions were on any of this stuff, I'm pretty confident these people communicate with his media people to make sure they're they're sending out the right message about him let me know what you think about this in the comments this is just nuts dude